Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. I'm here with Plugin Boutique, and today we're checking out Alter Tap by Eventide. Alter Tap is a super cool, super unique tap delay unit that gets really awesome results. So I'm gonna go ahead and play you my example here, and it's showcasing the way I found myself using Alter Tap for the most part, and that's with creating unique fills and crescendos. It's making these things that are just awesome that I would never sit down and just program myself because it'd be too much. But this delay unit, tap delay unit, is actually creating these things by itself with just a couple of tweaks to the knobs. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this example. Then we're gonna run through some of the presets and there are a ton of them, so you're gonna be pumped about that. And then I'm gonna go through each one of these parameters we have here on the GUI and explain a bit about them. And then to top off the video, I'm gonna show you how to adjust and map parameters to the macro ribbon down here, which functions kind of the same way as a macro knob inside of Ableton Live. And then show you how to use the hot switch button, which allows you to load two instantiations of the instrument inside of itself to A, B, different settings and parameters to find the one you like best. So let's go ahead and check out this example. So AlterTap made that crescendo there, and all I had to do was feed it one of the snares from the main snare, and it did it all on its own. So if I go ahead and load that up, and if I wanted to program that with MIDI, it would take a long time. And all I had to do inside of here is just tweak a couple knobs. But let me go ahead and drop Alter Tap on the main clap loop here. And we're gonna go ahead and preview some of the presets before we jump into the GUI. As you can see here, we've got delay, modulation, reverb, tremolo, pads, ambience, glitch and stutter, HR, factory, artists. And each one of the artists has a set of presets they made themselves. And it's just a lot to go through. So we're not gonna go through too many, but we're gonna get maybe one or two of each one. So let's go ahead, delay, and just check out one. So that's a perfect example of what I was talking about at, in terms of Ultra Trap making fills, because that's a great fill, a good way to change up just that monotonous snare on every you know quarter note or every half note. It's just phenomenal, and that's what I've been using it for. However, that's not all it's good for. So let's go ahead and check out the reverbs. Really nice sound of reverbs. It just that's so glitchy and so awesome and so unique. You know what I mean? Let's go ahead and check out some Tremelo stuff. Again, fills, cool, cool, cool. Pads and ambience. <laughs> See, such a nice sound right there. Let's check out some glitch and stutter stuff. Cool. Again, fills, crescendos, awesome. And that's where I'm gonna stop with those presets. Obviously there's a ton more, but uh, I wanna jump into this GUI real quick and explain a little bit about some of these parameters because they are pretty cool and they're very useful and very intuitive and you get some of those awesome results tweaking these in the right way. The first thing I want to bring your attention to is the mix lock. So for something like this where I have my snare doubled up, I want to have it at 100% because I don't want it to play any of the dry signal. I just want to hear the affected signal. And if I want to do that and then maybe switch through some of the presets, there's the mix lock function. So I can go ahead and lock that down. And then as I flip through the presets, the mix will stay at 100%. That's just something to keep in mind and an awesome feature to have, especially when you're using it on a send and return track or at 100% like I'm doing right here. You could also lock it down at 50% if that's the way you're going as well. So here we have the in and out volumes. Those are pretty straightforward stuff. And also the mix I've already kind of touched on. This is your dry wet, essentially. 100, 100% wet, zero, dry. The length is how long the taps take to come out. So if I put the tap rate, let me go ahead and put it on the factory default. If I take the tap rate and crank it all the way up to 64 and then pull the length way down, let's turn the sync on down here. 
um, we're gonna expect 64 taps to happen over the course of, let's say, an eighth. So we're gonna, we can expect something really quick and short and crazy. Right, pretty cool if we pull it up. So that's like a bar long. Uh, we can go up to four bars long, which is awesome. Taps, the number of taps that happen over the length of time we've designated. So we can go from one up to 64 taps. The pre-delay determines how long Ultra Tap will wait to start the taps. So if I bring it up to a quarter note and I pull the taps up to 44 and I let it go over a half a bar, we should see the taps start right here instead of right on the note, which is what we've set up here in the pre-delay. And that's exactly what's happened. So spread is a little bit different than you might be thinking. Usually when you see spread inside of an audio plugin, you think stereo field or stereo image. But here it's talking about the frequency of the taps. So at zero, the taps will happen uniformly over a period of time. If you go into the positive, it's going to start less frequent and then get quicker as the time goes on. And if we go into the negative integers here, we're gonna get really quick hits and then it's gonna tailor off with less frequent hits. That's awesome. And then the taper effect is where we can get some crescendo. So if I go ahead and turn it back up like this. So here we have the taper is going from loud to soft. And here we're gonna start soft and get louder. So your standard kind of crescendo effect. Very, very cool. So you can tell just with these set of parameters here at the top, you can already get some really interesting and awesome results. The width is what we were talking about before with the spread, it's the stereo width. So here is gonna be, zero is actually gonna be mono. And 100% is going to kind of be like a ping pong, but start towards the left and then go to the right. And the negative 100 is gonna be the opposite of that. So start on the right and go to the left. I'm not sure which one it starts on which side, but you can play around with it to get what, exactly what you're looking for. Tone is kind of like an EQ, so we can get a little bit more hollow here. Or a little bit more dull. Slurm is a really interesting parameter, and it has to do with trying to emulate the slurring of a tape going through a tape machine. And it's really interesting, and if you play around with it, you can get some really cool results, especially in conjunction with these other parameters. Chop is an LFO being applied to some of the parameters, and you can see that we've got quite a few different LFOs to choose from. We've got triangle, saw, ramp, square, sample and hold, and then the ribbon, and then swells to get those kind of really nice crescendo effects. The rise is how much the rise effect is going to be applied to the LFO. And then we have our sync options over here and we can even tap in the tempo if we wanted to. But let's talk about the macro ribbon for a second. As you can see here, I'm moving it back and forth and you can see that we have four parameters moving. And any one of the parameters with the outline of the gray circle here can be macro mapped to the ribbon here. So if I wanted to map, say, the width, I can actually just click that arrow inside and move it up and now as I move the ribbon, you can see that the width is moving with all these other parameters. Now, if I wanted to reverse it, I've just got to take the white dot and take the blue dot and reverse it. So the blue dot is going to be whenever the ribbon is on the right, and the white dot is whenever the ribbon is on the left. So obviously you can go really dramatic with the change, or you can actually make it quite small, depending on what kind of effects you want to do. And the last thing I want to touch on is the hot switch function which is a way to hold two instantiations inside of the same plugin, so we can go in A, B. And the way you wanna do it is you wanna click and hold until it flashes, and then you wanna make whatever changes you wanna make. So I'm gonna come over here and do some stuff like this, and then just click again, and when it's blue, it'll be on the, the instantiation that you have right here, and if you click it, 
it will go back to the other one you had before you made any of those changes. So that's just a good way to get back and forth between maybe some small tweaks or some bigger tweaks to find whatever's working best for your project. But anyway, that's Ultra Tap in a nutshell. I hope you learned something. Check it out now. It's available on Plugin Boutique. I hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. Thank you.